Hello, welcome back to the channel. It's a beautiful Sunday morning, so I'm going to crack on and do some more work on my Renault 9. Right, so this morning's issue was the carburetor idle. Um, a big shout out to Sean Henry Engineering. His YouTube channel helped me get through this because he's done an engine swap on his Renault 5. They have the same carb setup. And from that video, I was able to put together the missing pieces. This is a crankcase breather hose. I found that in the boot. There was also a spacer plate between the heat shield and the carb. I've refitted that with some instant gasket and I've put plumbed in another hose between that and the manifold again to do with um, exhaust emissions so hopefully that should idle a bit better now let's give it a go excuse the towel that's just to protect the dashboard from the sun but this isn't a cold start let's just see if it'll fire I let it warm up, I said that's a lot better. Well, that's a lot better. Now she's warmed up, I'll just take it off, choke a bit. I'm happy with that. Right, cup of tea. This morning, guys, I need to talk to you about something before I do any work on the car. We have um, some good news. Those of you um, who have been following the channel for a long time will know I've been plagued by a certain farmyard animal and um, for four weeks now, touch wood, I've not had a peep out of him. Now I know it's summer guys but do roosters go on holiday or um, do they hibernate? I, I don't know, I don't do physics, I'm not David Attenborough. Um, there's a good chance the foxes may have finally got the old which is great news because I'm used to being woken up about three or four in the morning and then having that thing all bloody day it's a bit weird actually but yeah it's been four weeks now and I've not heard a peep out of him so I can only presume it's R.I.P. Cockrell Anyway, it's a little montage. I thought, um, <laughs> here's his finest moments. I'll be right back. Fucking cockerel. Yeah. Right, out of gear. Pump is priming, I can hear that. Fucking cockerel. That's over there today. Maybe goes around the houses. Hello, welcome back to the channel and the ambassador project. <laughs> Fucking cockerel. And then we'll do the current change because I'd like to get some antifreeze back in this car. Fucking shut the fuck up. Right, so. Uh, the engine idle issue is sorted, so we've, we've got, got that ticked off the list. We need to now look at the electrics because there's a couple of issues with the car. None of the gauges work on the dash. Um, the temperature gauge doesn't seem to be working and that'd be handy to have that working because if I do do a coolant change on this, which I plan to, I want to know that the car's getting up to temperature and that the fan switch is cutting in, which it doesn't seem to be doing at the moment, so we need to look at that. Um, there's a load of un unplugged cables in the engine bay, so need to sort of work out where they're meant to be going to and reconnect those and then um, alternator is the battery getting a good charge so we'll do that in a second I've got my multimeter um, and then I want to do an oil and filter change so a little bit to do this morning so let's crack on uh, I'm going to set this to 20 volts first off let's just check the battery without the engine running make sure we've got a good battery And we have got 12 and a half volts, which is good. 
So I'm now going to run the engine up to. Well, I'm now going to run the engine, and hopefully the alternator is doing its job. We should see a charge coming to the battery. So let's just do that quickly. Fourteen and a half volts. So the alternator is charging the battery. Good times. Right onto the wiring. Right, so in the engine bay we have the wiring loom come up here, which I don't think is correct anyway, but there's that's disconnected. I don't know what that's meant to go to. Um, there's a couple of leads here. Um, a nest of cables or plugs down here. I see the horns disconnected, that should be connected up. Um, and I'm aware that some of these might be supplementary leads for additional things that the car hasn't got. Which is fair enough, but so I think this car was taken apart and put back together in a hurry. So, I mean, surely that should that should lead somewhere, shouldn't it? That should be plugged in. So, I'm gonna have a bit of a play around with these. Also, I might short the um, the cables out on the electric cooling fan just to see if if we can complete the circuit, just to make sure the fan actually works. And uh, yes, I do have a new radiator because that doesn't look too great. It does look like it's been leaking, so at some point we'll change the rad as well. Right, I'll just put that lead on there and the temperature gauge now works. What was connected up to it was this wire here, which is for the horn. So I'll put that back into there and now that works. So we've now got a working temperature gauge which has been creeping up slowly and so I just need to sort the oil temperature gauge out now and then look at the cooling fan because I don't think that's hooked up. Right so let's have another look at this. The wiring to the cooling fan here, one wire goes to ground to the body so that's your earth and then the, the other lead which is presumably 12 volt it's disconnected, so that's not going to work without finding a path. So I need to plug that into somewhere. I'm not sure where that goes to, I might have to refer to the dreaded Haynes manual. That, I am convinced, is the oil temperature sender, oil pressure sender, which is disconnected. This wiring loom, I'm pretty sure, should be further down, but it can't go further down because the way it's being wired up here, that, that leads to the temperature sender is far too short, unless that's the wrong lead for it. but. Then the gauge is working, so I don't know. I'll we'll try swapping the round again and see if it makes a difference. Then are those two the right ones? Guys, if you're going to take things apart, label them up. Put a bit of masking tape around saying heater fan because I've now got to undo all your bodgery. Uh. Right, so I think I'm going to abandon doing more advanced electronics for today. Um, happy with the progress so far, but I'm not confident about the, the heater fan wiring. So I'll talk to Sean, um, the chap I mentioned at the beginning of this video. He's got a five. Uh, he's done an engine swap, like I said, so he, he should be the chap to ask. And if he doesn't know, he's not sure, I'll refer to the dreaded Haynes manual. But that is the last resort, guys, because they are useless. Um, so all in filter time. Now the engine's just been running so it's an ideal time to drop the oil while it's nice and thin and warm. I've got, uh, I did have an oil drain socket but I just dropped that so bear with. <laughs> I was going to say you will need a 8mm square drive for the sump pan um, sump plug. Got that there. I kept that from the BX actually. Um, oil filter, I'm thinking of Fram part number PH2874. That should be the correct thread and size for the this particular car. And I'm going to go with um, five litres of Serval Morris 1040. So let's get the sump pan out. Let's get a sump pan off now, that's a bit drastic. Let's get the sump plug out and drain that oil. Ah, uh, what could go wrong? Right, you have to bear with me because I'm on my side. I'm lying on a bit of carpet which is covered in ants. I'm going to get a bit in, but hey ho, these must. Right, it's so an 8mm square drive. What are you doing, camera? Right, so the 8mm square drive socket goes in there. You'll need a 19mm to go over that, or a bar you could put through there on an old screwdriver if you're really struggling, or you can use a spanner, which I think is 17mm. 
I'm going to get the drip tray underneath and we can crack that off and drain the ore. Great. Right, so this will come undone. Of course it will. <laughs> oh, that's come undone straight away, lovely. Let's get that drip tray in the way. I don't want to get over myself. That's immediately gone everywhere. Great. dirt on me. Right so the oil filter at the front of the engine handily. Um, I'm going to try and get some grips on there. Um, how is this going to happen? I give it a, um, okay. If the alternator wasn't in the way I'd have direct access above it but uh, unfortunately um, no, I'm not going to take that off. I can't be asked. Some strange noises come from this car. I think it's just heat expansion. Hopefully. Uh, everything's in the way. Bear with. That's it. Sometimes you just get a cloth on these things and they just turn. No. Well, we'll give it a go. <coughs> right, well, luck seems to be on our side this morning. I've managed to get the water pump pliers in from under here, avoiding all these wires, and the filter. It's now spinning freely, so I'm just going to take that off. Oh yeah, it's leaking all everywhere. Good thing I put some carpet down. In two seconds, box. Just come round this side to get the last few turns off. There we go. And it is a Fram 2874, so that's good. Means we haven't got the wrong filter at least. Right. Let's get this one installed quickly. Now, if you do an oil change guys, you never fit these seals dry because on tightening them back up they can snag and tear and then you've potentially ruined your new filter so I just tend to use a bit of the old engine oil. Just put a smear of oil around the new seal and that will ensure a nice smooth mating surface that won't snag when you tighten it up and just tighten these by hand guys just start it start it on there get it nice and tight and then give it another full turn that's all you need no get out of the way flies uh no spanners required as it were right now i'm not going to be able to fill this filter normally if i'm fitting an oil filter i fill it with oil but because it's on the side of the engine it would all just leak out Leak out, leak out. So, I'm just going to get this started. Alright, I'm just going to try my hands off because they're a bit slippery. We'll get that nipped up. Then we can put some oil in it. Yay! Right, lubrication time, ladies. I've got my trusty Haynes manual here covering the Renault 9 and 11 models and in the opening few pages we have a uh, introduction oh that's quite nice introduction to the Renault 9 and 11 if you can see that anyway so I got distracted there get out cheeky so and so right you couldn't write that, could you? Um, capacities, engine oil, refill with filter change, 
1397cc, which is what we've got here. Uh, th three litres. I didn't think much came out. Right, well, we'll crack on with that. It's got to be time for a cup of tea, hasn't it? Guess that works. So three litres. Handily, it's got a mark on there, so we just need to pour in three litres from the bottle. What could go wrong? This could take some time guys, so if you've got a cup of tea to have or some knitting to do. So when was the last time you spoke to your neighbour? Maybe go and bring them a cake or something. Unless you have my neighbours of course, in which case avoid like the plague. I wonder what Dan Aykroyd's doing today. He might be servicing a Renault 9, but... Doubt it. Right, that's about two and a half litres. Well, we may as well pour the rest in, let it settle for a bit. Let it get to the bottom of the sump and then we'll check the levels and make sure they're right. Right, all levels have been topped up, everything's settled. Let's give this a test fire. Right, well that's happy. Um, Temperature gauge is now no longer working. That's um, interesting. Ah, stick and gauge. So that's all good, so we can keep an eye on the temperature gauge because I don't want this thing overheating. But we do need to change that radiator, like I said before. Um, ah, one more thing, the clutch. Right, um, there's, there's an issue with the clutch cable, I think, because these are um, cable operated, not hydraulic on these. Um, when I try and put it into gear, it crunches. I've had a look at the cable and there's a lot of slack in it. I don't think it's the clutch itself because if you take up the slack in the cable, the clutch engages. Now how, um, how cable operates on this system is there's a cam on the pedal box, uh, like a quadrant with a, a gear and that takes up the slack, it auto adjusts. That seems to be working okay and there's nothing apparently broken. Obviously you need to be a contortionist to get underneath the pedal box to get to it. I'm pretty sure the clutch is okay because I took up the slack on the cable the other day and it temporarily worked. So has someone fitted the wrong cable? There is a new cable fitted, so I'm not too sure if that's the issue. So I've ordered another one online and I'm currently waiting for that. But yeah, let me just show you what I mean. So clutch in, can't get into gear. Yeah, it's not engaging. Uh, there's no slack to take up on the cable in the engine bay. It's all done in this cam, like I said, on the quadrant. So um, I'm going to try changing the cable. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to set fire to the car. No, no, I ain't joking. Um, I don't think it's a worn clutch. It could be. And I have bought a clutch kit. It was £25 to Motor Factors. So for the sake of 25 quid, you can't even get a Domino's for that. Um, I bought a clutch kit, but uh, I hope it's not the clutch. Anyway, that's where I'm going to draw a line on it today, guys. Thanks ever so much for watching for this catch up. Um, more coming on the Ray 9 very soon. I think the next job I'll do is the radiator and flush the cooling system because that'll be fun, won't it? So, as always, thank you for watching, guys. I shall see you with some more content on this car very soon. Take care. Right, where's my tea?